Hi, everybody. This is John Lords from DiscoverSkills.com. And a few weeks ago, Apple came out with its latest operating system for mobile devices called iOS 7. Now that I've had a chance to mess around with a little bit, I thought I'd pass along to you what I'm calling my top five changes for iOS. Hopefully, it'll help out some of you folks who are maybe just getting ready to make the transition or already have and are wondering what the heck's going on. Anyway, that's next. And so Apple's got a new iOS. Uh, you know, it's about time that they did it since it's been quite a few years since Apple first came out with iOS and has made, you know, some pretty decent improvements over the year, but nothing kind of drastic. Now that the mobile market is beginning to really heat up with regards to competition with, you know, companies like Samsung and even Microsoft with their service pro Surface products, um, Apple is beginning to feel the heat. And so I think that's one reason they came out with this new operating system. The good news is it's not a huge transition that you have to make uh, from the older iOS 6 to 7. In other words, a lot of the stuff still works the same. Still, there's some pretty important changes that I think you need to know about. And that, again, is why I'm calling this my top five changes with the new iOS 7. And those changes are in order. Number one, it has a new cosmetic look. Number two, there's a new multitasking bar. Number three, has a much better control panel. Number four, it has a more quick access search. And number five, they've completely retooled Safari, um, I think for the better. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of those changes and, uh, and how you might deal with them. The first thing you're going to notice when you take a look at the new iOS 7 is that there is a new look and feel to it. It's, it's got more of a flat, a uh, defined look than it did before and you know really this is a cosmetic change more than anything else and there's not going to be any kind of learning curve here it just sort of takes some getting used to um, now that I've used it for a while um, I actually kind of like the new clean look the second change, and this is a lot bigger change, is in the multitasking bar. Now, if you'll remember, the multitasking bar is where you double press the home button and what it will do is it'll bring up uh, a scrolling swipeable list of the apps that you have recently been in and what it allows you to do is to quickly go back to an app that you've already been in tap it and then go into it now the big change is if you can see the screen here is that now instead of just giving you the buttons to the apps they actually give you screenshots of what the app actually has up and going in it so you can see my alarm clock there and there's another app I guess that was my weather app and so on and so forth and then what you can do is if you want to actually go into the app you just tap and of course it comes up just like before now what a lot of people have not been getting quite as used to is if I double press again and go back into it is how do I turn off the apps like I, I used to tap and hold the actual icon down uh, and I would go into wiggle mode and then there was a small X I could press. Well, that's no longer available. What you do instead is when you double tap and you go into that screen, there we go, all you have to do to quit a program or to turn it off is to come over to the actual thumbnail of it and swipe directly upward. Swipe it upward. So I'm going to go over here to my calendar and I'm going to swipe directly upward and there we go. I've turned it off. I'm going to come over here to YouTube now. I'm going to swipe it up directly, and I've turned it off. So that's how you now use the multitasking bar. Now the third big change, I'm going to press the home button and go back out to my main icons here. Third big change is with the control panel. It used to be that you double press the home button and then swipe completely to the right to get to a small uh, player control panel. Now you go to a more sophisticated panel, but the way you do it is by starting with your finger off the screen and then swiping straight upward. So I'm going to start with my finger right down here, swipe straight up, and you'll see the control panel appear. 
there it is there we go now what's neat about this control panel is there's a lot of really useful things on here that that because you just swipe upward you can really quickly get to on the bottom are four app icons one is for the flashlight one is for the timer and clock one is for the calculator and then you can quickly go into your camera with this app button here as we move up the screen you've got your player controls and volume button right here a little bit higher you have a brightness control this is something that a lot of people uh, like to do is is turn up the brightness turn down the brightness of your device as you use it in darker rooms or lighter rooms or wherever you might be so that's a really quick way to get to that now you just slide back and forth to brighten or darken it at the very top you have quick access to some things we commonly turn off and on here's airplane mode Wi-Fi turn off and on, Bluetooth off and on, do not disturb off and on, and the off and on switch for the lock rotation. So again, to get to this, you simply come down to the bottom off the screen, swipe directly upward, and you get this control panel. To turn it off, you just come up to the top to this little chevron pointing down and swipe downward, and that will turn it off. Okay. Now, the fourth thing is the quick access search, at least that's what I call it. Uh, it used to be that if you wanted to do a silver light search, you'd swipe, you'd swipe directly or clear over to the right and you'd run into the search screen. You can see me trying to do that here and nothing's happening. That's because it's no longer there. Instead, what you do is you take your finger up toward the top of the screen, not the very top. Uh, swiping up here and downward will still give you your notifications. Instead, you come down just a little way into this area you swipe straight down and it will take you to search mode. In search mode it works just like it did before where you can basically type in an app that you are looking looking for and then it will bring up whatever kinds of matches that it has here. Okay, so that basically works like it did before. I'm going to go ahead and tap cancel in the corner and go back to my main screen. And then finally, the big another big change is the retooled Safari. And I'm going to go ahead and tap on my Safari icon. And the way they've retooled it is visually they have put all the buttons here at the bottom and they've sort of changed the way they look. So you have backward, forward buttons. You still have your share button at the bottom. You still have your bookmarks button. Okay, so those things have pretty much stayed the same if you go inside of them. But what's really changed is right here on the, what I sometimes call the tab button or the multiple screen button. It used to be that you would tap on this and it, it would allow you to have up to eight different screens open in the web browser at one time. Well now when you tap on it, let me go ahead and do that here, it takes you to um, kind of a, a file card list, I guess you might say, of all the different places you've recently been and have left open. And you can see that as I swipe, what I'm doing is I'm swiping upward here, it basically lets me scroll through them. Okay, so as I swipe up here, you can see that happen. And then once you go to one you want, like I'm going to go here to Strike Zone, I tap on it, and it brings it up full screen and then takes you there. Okay, I'm going back down here and tap on it again. And we'll go over here to Wikipedia this time. Okay, so basically when you tap on this button, um, it allows you to swipe through things you, where you've been or, or lets you have multiple web pages open at the same time. To close a web page, you can simply go over and you can tap on the little X in the corner and that will delete it. Okay. You can add an additional web page by tapping on the plus button at the bottom. And when you do, it takes you to a blank page, allows you to search at the top, it allows you to open your bookmarks and go to a page, or you can even tap on one of these predefined uh, tappable icons here that they automatically give you. Okay. And that pretty much does it. Now, there are a lot of other changes that you're going to see here, but, but again, um, what I wanted to do today was to go through the top five. 
Well, I hope you found that useful, and uh, perhaps it'll help you get past some of the initial barriers with using the new iOS 7. In, uh, in future videos here coming up, I will have some more information about iOS 7, as well as other things about the iPad, the iPhone, that uh, a lot of times we teach in our different classes. In the meantime, if you'd like to learn more about our program and also get a lot more free information about technology, you're welcome to visit our website. The address is www.discoverskills.com. Uh, drop me an email message anytime. My address is jlortz, and that's J-L-O-R-T-Z at discoverskills.com. I'd also love to have you visit my YouTube channel and take a look at all the videos we have up there for you to watch. The address is www.youtube.com forward slash discover skills and of course I have a Facebook page and if you uh, like us up on Facebook uh, you'll start getting our messages from Facebook about all the technology things that we offer the address for that is www.facebook.com forward slash discover skills again my name is John Lortz from discoverskills.com and I'll see you in the next video